Here we are at Wanagasade in Sanam Chai Kade, Chachan Sao, Thailand. Wanagasade is the home of Puyai Wibun Kamchalun. He is a recognized leader in the Thai self-reliance movement. He is also the developer of a concept that we call here in Thailand Wanagasade. Well, Wanagasade translates roughly as agroforestry. Uh, it's more than just uh, a diverse agroforestry system. It's also all about how to apply the knowledge and use resources to meet the basic needs in your life. We're here as part of a program. Uh, this is our first international program uh, with participants from abroad uh, who have come to learn about uh, agroecology, about uh, self-reliance, as well as we're also combining uh, English because uh, these participants will then go on to other places staying with Thai farmers, for example, and most Thai people don't speak English, and particularly Thai farmers. So we're giving a basis of uh, self-reliance, agroecology, agroforestry here, as well as uh, Thai language. Uh, Wanaka Said, as a concept, uh, starts with knowing yourself, which is something we don't often say, knowing your needs, and then knowing your resources then it looks at how to manage your resources and develop your resources. Primarily, we'd say developing a, uh, a food forest system, it's sometimes called, but it's not just food because we have five basic needs in Thailand, we call them. We say rice, because that's the basis of our food here is rice. We eat rice with almost every meal. Then we have all the food that's not rice, everything that we have with rice. And then we have medicine, and then we have the things we use every day in life which are things like shampoo, soap, but also it could be charcoal, which we use for cooking, other things like that. And then the last basic need of the five we call is soil fertility, because we are dependent upon the earth, and if we keep our earth healthy, and we've got this divorce agroforestry system, it doesn't have to only be forest, we can have rice and other, other ecological systems, and then that will produce our needs. Uh, this two-day program includes uh, a few activities. So for, for making natural balm, which if you're uh, in Europe or America, you might know the brand Tiger Balm, but this is a natural one. Uh, we collect herbs in the forest, then we uh, clean and we process these herbs, uh, extract essentially the, the medicinal ingredients into oil, and then we finish making the balm using other ingredients and get it into a balm form. Maybe, but I think you want it to be long and slow burning. So if you, if it's almost a. Not squeezing. She says just let the, just let the, the, the oil come out. It's hot. We also uh, make tea from uh, rice plants. So here we're finishing the, the cleaning process for the young rice plants. And typically, if you ever find uh, rice leaf tea, it's normally made only from the leaf. But Mr. Puyai Wibun, the founder of Wanaka said he knows that you can use the whole plant, not only the leaf, but also the roots. And we have Kabuk here, she's now uh, doing the first part, chopping off the roots first, uh, because the we're going to dry roast both the leaf and the roots, but the, the time required to roast the roots and to roast the leaves will be different. And then she's going to, she's chopping up the leaf into nice sized pieces to use for making a tea. And since we're going to do it as a loose leaf tea, we want a little bit longer pieces. If you're going to make it and then put it into tea bags, you might want a bit shorter pieces. So once we're done with this, then we'll roast it, we'll do the dry roasting process, and then we'll have tea ready for consumption. Uh, normally you, you think of tea from tea plants or camellia sinensis, but, uh, and rice, we normally think of just eating rice, but rice can also be medicine and it can be tea. So we, it's part of the one I could say, the concept is you knowing how to use things. 
Uh, most people only know how to eat rice as rice, but if you also know one of the many uses of rice, it's also you can make a good tea out of it. So we do this. And I said as we do Thai language because uh, so we have a Thai language focusing on uh, conversation and good pronunciation, getting a, a basic uh, solid start because uh, most Thai people and particularly most Thai farmers don't speak English. So uh, the participants when they leave here, they have enough Thai that they're ready to to start conversations and learn more from there when they're with Thai farmers and other Thai situations. And we also have the chance to learn about uh, food, natural food processing. So uh, food, if we don't know what is food and what is not food, there may be very useful food resources. We don't know what they are, then they're not serving our purpose. But also understanding how to process and use food is valuable. We can make snacks, we can make things that we can keep longer. So this is part of uh, the one I said concept. These are only not everything, this is just two days in a larger program. We do many other things, but this is to give a feel of a bit of what you might get uh, if you join a program with us. This would be a great thing to do for anyone really interested in any um, nat natural medicines or sustainability or any cooking or yes. really pretty much any thing. I mean, a everything here, it kind of, I guess, challenges your conception of what is a farm or what is useful um, because we live in the forest and you make use of almost everything. The water is largely like rain water <laughs> harvested and that we use and that we eat everything from the forest and see, but we eat really well. And so anyone can see everything. It can be useful and doesn't always have to be purchased, but also just how to utilize what you have really well is a kind of a great thing to see and that that's possible and could be applied even in places in cities would be, but you know, definitely in the country, is really kind of spectacular. Actually, the people who's uh, working the forestry, they, if they come here, they will uh, get how to survive with the forest. So generally, forestry are making, they are trying to protect it or sow it, but here uh, in Manaka said they teach us they explain us how to survive with the forestry. So I think that <coughs> most of the persons who's working in the forestry and our has to come here, probably. I, I think one thing that's really cool also that maybe people don't think about is you think of a, a forest maybe as being a lot of work or something, but what's really kind of great about it is once it's really established, the forest pretty much does all the work for you, or not all, but a lot of its own work. So, you know, the leaves fall and they generate better soil and you just kind of hang out and live off of it and live with it and instead of you know putting it's very low impact farming and very high yielding in a lot of ways anyway if you know how to use it yeah the management of the forest maybe yeah, at the end I would, I would just recommend it for to like anyone who will just uh, get open a bit slightly open-minded to nature or sustainable environment and all the yeah getting closer to the nature, so I would recommend to anyone. Actually, this could be a great example for how to live with the nature, without harming nature. I think the, 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 I, the same way, the first half, I think, when Michael told me, have American intern for Mesa come, come to visit us, I have to teach him, I think, Oh, maybe I forgot or something in English, but now I think I'm so happy and then I can talk with him and I can teach him something and exchange and we, I can uh, speak each other and can know each other. That's not very hard to me now. Uh, the current program is part of a MESA program that we're associated with in America. Uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoy this, and if you're interested, you can contact us, you can contact MESA, and uh, we'll have future programs where we can work with you on that. So, uh, thank you.